Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Howells. I'm currently studying computer science at the Open University. And in today's lecture, we'll be covering single cell formats, uh, the basic structure of single cell data, and a couple of common resources for finding public single cell data. So the questions we'll be answering in this lecture will be, what does single cell data look like? What are the common formats for storing single cell data? And where uh, we can find public single cell data on the internet? At the end of this lecture, we should understand uh, the basic structure of single cell data, be able to recognize different types and formats of uh, single cell metadata, uh, learn the common data formats used for storing single cell data, and finally become a little bit familiar with some popular sources uh, for finding public single cell data. So in our first section, we'll be looking at how single cell data is structured. Uh, so single cell data is really broken down into four main components. Um, first, we have our gene expression matrix. So this stores our gene expression values. Uh, we have our cell metadata and gene metadata, commonly referred to as barcodes for cell metadata and the features for gene metadata. And finally, we have our unstructured metadata, which sort of stores everything else. We're going to cover each of these uh, in the following slide. First one to go into is the gene expression matrix. So as I mentioned, this is a 2D matrix that stores gene expression values. So typically, the each row of this matrix is going to represent uh, our genes, and each column is going to represent our cells. Uh, now, in some data, this might be the other way around. So rows can represent cells, and columns can represent genes. And typically, in this case, we just want to perform a transpose operation on this matrix, which basically just swaps around uh, those rows and columns, because most tools usually have um, the genes as rows and the cells as columns, so we want to have it in that standard format. And finally, as I mentioned, uh, every single individual value of the matrix is going to be an individual gene expression for each specific cell and gene. Um, and finally, this matrix, or these matrices can be stored either in what's called a full or a sparse matrix form. Now, a, a full matrix is basically where we have every single value of the matrix is stored um, in the data. However, a lot of the values in this matrix can be uh, zero or just null or just, you know, information that we don't need. And so in order to compress this matrix further, we can use what's called a sparse matrix. And so that basically just gets rid of a lot of these empty values and compress that matrix. Um, so the matrix is a lot smaller and easy to store. However, for it, the sort of understanding the data and being able to just look at it and easily work with it, it makes it a bit more complicated because it's in a weird compressed format. So, you know, you want to look out for um, either or. Sometimes you'll see full. If they're really big data, sometimes look at compressed into a sparse matrix, which makes it a lot easier to store and uh, sort of handle. So our next type of... Um, our next component of single cell uh, data is the cell metadata. And as I mentioned, these are commonly referred to as barcodes. Um, and now this, style, this stores the metadata about the cells. So this may include the cell identifiers or barcodes, as well as any um, information about each individual cell, such as where the cell came from, so a specific patient or tissue sample, as well as some quality control metrics that you'll commonly um, generate using some analysis tools. And in this slide, we can see some example barcodes. So it's just going to comprise of the four main um, nucleotide letters, as well as sometimes we have additional information. But typically, if you find uh, data that contains um, these ex like these barcodes, this example, if you see metadata that looks like that, chances are you're looking at the cell metadata. <clears throat> metadata is the gene metadata, and these are commonly referred to as features. Um, and this contains metadata about our genes. So this may be gene identifiers or ensemble IDs, which are a standardized format for storing uh, gene IDs, um, as well as any expression metrics and quality control metrics. And these are basically just values that are generated, again, through a bunch of single cell analysis tools. And then uh, in this example table, we have a couple of gene symbols and ensemble IDs. So ensemble IDs, again, have a common format, and this will depend on the different types of species and everything, but it typically will look something like that. And our gene symbols then are just going to be comprised of various characters. 
So if you see any data like this in a file, chances are you're going to be looking at the gene metadata. Now, a final component for our single cell data is the unstructured metadata. So this is basically any metadata that doesn't belong to a specific cell or gene. That all gets put in this last section. So this could be information about the different batches or replicates, uh, the different sequencing platforms that were used to sequence this data, uh, as well as any you know uh, dates or times that this date that this uh, data was uh, generated, and you know things like the tissue source and uh, things like that. And then finally, we just have a couple of examples of sequencing platforms. Um, so you may find these in the metadata. So our next um, topic is what are the common uh, single cell data formats? So they mentioned there, um, so yeah, so there is a lot of different formats for storing single cell data. Um, we have a big list here and we're going to be going through each individual one and understand what, what it is, what data comprises of and uh, why it's used. This is kind of broken down into two main components. We have basic single cell formats and complicated. So first we're going to go into the basic ones. So our first uh, single cell format is called tabular. Now this is probably the most basic format you can have. The single file that's going to store our gene identifiers, our cell identifiers, and then our expression values. So in this image we have a basic um, structure for this uh, tabular data. So we can see down the first column each individual row begins with our gene identifier. On the top, we can see that we have our cell uh, barcodes, and then all those values are going to be our expression values. As I mentioned earlier, we see there's a lot of zeros because that's very common in single cell uh, formats. So our basic file extensions for this is .csv, .tsv, and .txt. So if you see something like that with those file extensions looking like this, chances are it's uh, the tablet format. Now this is a great format for just storing the most basic data, but it does have the limitation that it only stores this data. So it doesn't store any additional metadata about genes or cells or unstructured metadata, just the basics. So this could be useful for just if all you have is this data and you just want to store it, that's great. But typically for more complicated analysis, we're going to want to convert this into a more complex format. So our next uh, simple format is called the matrix market format commonly referred to as MTX. Now this specifically just stores the gene expression matrix, and this can either store it as a full or a sparse matrix, as we mentioned earlier. Now this format does not include any metadata whatsoever. So you will commonly see this uh, file alongside two individual files, typically called features and barcodes for the gene and cell metadata. And then you'll find um, the matrix format here. Now the common file extensions are either .mtx or .mm. So if you see a file with those two or either of those file extensions, chances are it's specifically just storing the gene expression matrix. And as I mentioned, usually when you're looking at public data, you're going to find two other files as well that contains the gene and cell metadata, because typically the expression matrix on its own isn't very useful. And those are kind of just the two basic ones, and the rest of the ones we'll be covering today will be the more complicated single cell formats. Uh, the first one is the AND data format. Now, this is a Python based single cell format, so it's typically just used in Python. It is used with the uh, AND data Python package, so that's how we're going to load and manipulate AND data objects. Now, this contains basically all the data that we mentioned earlier. It contains the gene expression matrix, the all the different cell and gene um, metadata, as well as any additional unstructured metadata. Um, and the common file extension for this is .h5ad. So basically, if you're going to use any Python tool, um, typically ScanPy is often used in Python for performing single cell analysis. Chances are you're going to want to use the AND data format. So our next format is Loom. Uh, this is also based, this is this is similar to AND data, this is based on the HD, um, sorry, HDF5 standard. Um, now this can store uh, sparse matrices, thus it makes it kind of efficient for larger data sets, whereas AND data stores uh, only like uh, full matrix matrices. So, you know, for really large data, it can, the file sizes can quite, get quite big 
um, as well as it, it also supports additional sort of specific uh, metadata, such as graph objects, which um, are helpful for storing graphs and clusters uh, when we're trying to do further downstream analysis. Now, Loom is supported by many different languages, Python, R, C, MATLAB, all different types. So it's quite a good one for more general purpose if you're going to be transitioning between different tools, perhaps. But as we'll find later, um, certain tools use certain formats. It gets kind of complicated. But uh, nice and simple, the file extension for this is .loom. So if you see that, it's a .loom uh, format. Quite an easy one to remember. Next one is Surat. So this is our first R-based format or fully R-based format. This is used by the Surat package. Um, allows reads integration with the suite of Surat tools. So we have additional package called Surat, which um, has various different uh, single cell analysis tools. And so if you're going to be using any of the Surat tools, chances are you're going to want to convert your single cell data into the Surat object if it isn't already. And again, similar to AND data and Loom and all the other complex data, data sets we'll be looking at the rest of this lecture, uh, this will store all of our data. So the gene expression matrix, uh, gene and cell barcode, um, sorry, gene and cell metadata, and our unstructured metadata. And finally, the file extensions for CIRAT is .rds, .rda, and .rdata. Now, uh, the, the rest of the formats we're going to see in this lecture are going to have the same file extensions. So just because you see these file extensions doesn't necessarily mean it's CIRAT. This is sort of just how R stores the data. So it's going to get a bit confusing, but uh, those are some extensions to look out for for this. Our next one, uh, next format is single cell experiment format. So this again is an R based format, which is um, provided by the bioconductor package uh, called single cell experiment. So a little bit easier to remember, though maybe a bit confusing. So this, uh, similar to how CIRAT works with all the CIRAT tools. Single cell experiment works a lot with the bioconductor ecosystem. So all the different types of bioconductor tools for performing single cell analysis, chances are um, will be most compatible with the single cell experiment format. So you're going to want to use that format if you're using any bioconductor tools. Similar to Surat, the file extensions are exactly the same. So as I mentioned, it can get kind of confusing to know what exact uh, format you're looking for, like what format you're looking at if you have some data. Um, but yeah, and again, this will contain all of our metadata, all of our different data. And the specific structure of each um, object isn't too important to go in depth in this lecture, but essentially they're pretty much the same in, in how they store the data. And I believe our last uh, format that we're looking at in this lecture is the cell data set. Um, now this again is, our, is an R-based format. Now this one is used by the Monocle package um, and therefore it integrates uh, quite easily with the Monocle suite of tools, uh, which does all different types of single cell analysis, similar to Surat and Bioconductor and Cell Data. Uh, and lastly, the file extensions are again the exact same, .rds, .rda, and .rdata. Um, and with that, that's all the different common formats for storing single cell data. So our next bit we'll be looking into is the different sources for single cell data. Um, so this is a very basic list of uh, resources for storing single cell data. Uh, there are lots and lots of resources, more than I could fit in a little table for this slide. But these are some of the common ones. Um, what, what sources you'll want to use will probably depend on the type of data uh, that you're looking for. Um, but, you know, th uh, these are some reputable sources that you can uh, use. So if you ever find any data on here, it's a good chance that um, it's probably good quality, but again, you're probably going to want to look more into uh, the quality of it yourself because it can sort of vary from different sources. But yeah, if you're if you're looking at doing any sort of analysis with public data, maybe these are some places to explore. A lot of these websites have search boxes and little lists of all different types of data, so you can go and explore and see if there's any data that you think look interesting, and maybe you can do some of your own analysis after doing this uh, boot camp. The last thing that we're going to cover in this lecture are compressed files. Now, a lot of the files, because this data can be quite big, um, and sometimes we have very multiple different files in a folder, these files will often be compressed. There's a, different, a few different ways of looking out for compressed files. Uh, typically, with file extensions, just .zip 
.gz, .tar, and finally .tar .gz. Now .zip and .gz are individual file compression. So if you see just these um, formats, .zip or .gz, that means you have an individual file that is compressed. Now we can use an unzip tool to decompress those. Um, and so we can just use our data like that. But .tar and .tar.gz, that is um, sort of folder archiving. So what that does is it takes a folder with many different files and it compresses it all into one single file. So it's a lot easier to manage and it's a lot less space when you don't have multiple different files in one folder, instead you just have one file. So .tar, if you have a .tar um, file, chances are there's actually lots of different files there. When you decompress that, you can have a folder full of files. And .tar.gc combines individual file compression with this big folder compression. So it can take a large folder full of files, compress each individual file, and then finally compress that all into one big file. So often when you see that uh, data with, with that um, format, you're going to want to unzip it twice. So the first time you unzip it, we'll compress, we'll decompress that single file into a big folder of compressed files, and then next time you unzip it, it'll decompress each individual file. Um, so the importance of doing this is sometimes you can put um, data through these tools without decompressing it, because sometimes when these tools compress the data, it doesn't actually compress anything because the, the, there's a lot of entropy in the, in the data, and so it doesn't actually compress. And so sometimes you can get away with deep, not uncompressing and unzipping the data, but sometimes you will have errors. And so it's always good if you have um, compressed data to just unzip it. Now, the nice thing in Galaxy is it does have an unzip tool, as we can see in the image here, just called unzip. So we can just throw in our file and it should just be able to unzip it. Sometimes you can have some issues with unzipping. Um, common, the most common error is uh, the format of the data. So you want to check that the that Galaxy has identified the correct format for that data, whether it's .gz, .tar, um, things like that. Yeah. So with that, our key points for this lecture was that single cell data consists of four main sections. So again, our gene expression matrix and our three different types of metadata, cell, gene, and unstructured metadata. And single cell data can come in a variety of formats. So we covered the most basic formats, the most common formats um, that you'll typically find with single cell analysis. Um, probably 90% of single cell analysis you do, you'll be using these different formats. As I mentioned, different formats are used for different tools and different languages. So you're gonna wanna get used to converting to different formats and using all these different formats. It's really gonna depend on the suite of tools that you use. Um, uh, as well as different data formats are required. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I would just mention that, so we don't need to do that. But yes, like I mentioned, uh, different languages, different packages, they use different uh, data formats. And finally, there are lots of different single cell, uh, public single cell atlases that consist of lots of different useful single cell data. So um, yeah, like I mentioned, if you need to use single cell data, you want to look through all these different formats or all these different uh, data repositories and uh, see what kind of cool data you can uh, find and uh, hopefully do some analysis on. And with that, that's the end of this lecture. So I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a bit about how single cell data is structured and some of the formats. And yeah, thanks for watching.